Okay, so welcome everyone to this um, online training. Uh, it's going to be about home based, being a home based appointment setter. Now I know that you've uh, you've seen a lot of job posts on um, appointment setter roles. Now, magulat um, kayo. This will be a different type of appointment setter service na pwede nyo i-provide sa, sa client. So, there, um, most of the appointment setter roles that you see online are um, naka-program na siya sa client. So, meron na silang step-by-step -step procedure, may workflow process na sila, um, and then meron na silang proper scripts for you para um, just upo na lang kayo and then you just um, you just follow the script and then keep on calling um, their potential customers. Now, this one is different. If you are a new, um, if you are new in the virtual assistant world, um, and then you're struggling to get jobs online, there is another way for you to be able to work remotely. Uh, and it's by offering your service as a remote or home-based appointment setter. So don't wait for clients or for hiring managers or for agencies to post jobs um, para lang makakuha kayo ng remote jobs um, or remote uh, work. So you can also reach out to businesses or to business owners or to um, to companies na, that are, uh, that may be uh, that may be interested in in getting you or hiring you as an appointment sector. So this is what the training will be all about. Okay, so I will now run my presentation. Okay, so what is an appointment sector? So a, an appointment sector provides support to a company sales team or business owner by calling prospective clients or customers and scheduling appointments for them to speak with a salesperson or the business owner. All right, so if it's a medium to large size company, meron sila mga sales people doon, mga salesmen or sales executives na tinatawag. Now, if it's just a small business, it can be, you know, just the business owner na magsiset kayo ng appointments. All right, so... And then next, so what are the tasks of a home-based appointment center? So you're calling outbound and referral leads. And um, so nakita niyo yung word na leads. And that is why I mentioned in my uh, introduction, so video uh, for this training, uh, it, is, um, it is best for you to um, watch the live, uh, watch the recorded video ng lead generation because they go together. Now, if you are already a lead generation specialist and you're done already researching for potential customers for your clients, then the next step that, or the next service that you can provide to your clients is appointment setting naman. So aside from lead generation, you can also provide lead generation, uh, sorry, aside from lead generation, you can also provide appointment setting services to your client or potential clients. So uh, another task is to manage accounts or regions. So for, for big companies or medium to me, uh, big size companies, um, meron sila mga kanya -kanya accounts. Let's say for example, one company has um, three products. So you will be managing one product and then you will be setting appointments. You will be calling potential customers for that certain account. So you will manage that. And then regions naman, for example, merong client na, um, let's say, sa US, so nationwide yung kanyang um, reach. So uh, you will be managing one state, let's say California. So ikaw yung magmamanage ng mga potential customers niya na based in California. Yeah. So it depends on ano rin, a time zone na gusto niya mag-work on. So if you want to work on... Um, uh, Eastern time, which is sa New York, I think sa New York yon. Then you will manage the the potential customers of the clients sa New York region. Okay. So and then yeah, another task. Of course, this is the 
ito yung pinaka-hype nung, nung services niya is magbubuk or set kayo na appointments for your client. And then updating CRM, so you need data entry skills here. And then diary management, it's because um, you will um, you will be putting all the appointments dun sa calendar or diary ng client ninyo. And then, um, of course, uh, it's also important that you have customer service skills because you will be talking to customers or potential customers of the client. Okay, and so we go to next. So who will benefit from this training? Um, aspiring BAs or freelancers. Um, this is for you to know kung this is the right path for you to take. Kasi merong iba na naguguluhan, they want to work remotely, they want to work from home, but they don't know where to start or what type of service that they could provide to the potential client. So um, you will get an idea here if this is the right one for you or not. And then um, current appointment sectors who would like to try different strategies and add more clients. So if you're already a, an appointment setter, and you love calling customers, and then burn out na, they want to try other, um, other strategies and, um, and add more clients. Because sometimes appointment setters, it's going to be a full-time work, eight hours of calling yan, lalo na kapag may automatic na dialer yung, yung client ninyo. So, if you want to try a different um, way of doing appointment setting, then you would benefit from this training. Um, kasi you still want to be an appointment setter. Gusto mo lang ng other clients then, and you also want a different strategy. And then current VAs. So if you're a current VA, and then you would like to add a service to your current um, to your current offerings na kunya na offer na kayo ng social media or lead generation sa client niyo or you are an administrator na or a secretary para PA sa client niyo you can add this as a service to your to your client okay and before we proceed meron bang question 1 2 3 4 5 Walang question? Okay, let's proceed to the next slide. <laughs> All right. So tools. Um, if you want to become an appointment setter, these are the basic tools that you need. So you need a computer um, and then high speed internet connection, especially if your, um, your appointment setting service involves a lot of calling. So uh, meron kasi appointment setting na pwedeng non-voice. And this is what you don't know yet. Uh, pwede kasi yun na puro emails lang and puro chats. Um, you can already set an appointment using automated tools ng client niyo or, or automated tools na na-research niyo that you can include in your package when you offer this service to the client. And then uh, leads or list of contacts. So, this one is um, if you are already a lead generation specialist to a particular client, um, you already know the leads na, kasi kayo yung nag-research ng leads na yon. Pwede kayo ang nag-research nun, pwede rin na provided na ni client yon. Okay? So dialer, uh, it can be spelled as one L lang in American English. So I'm using a British ano, uh, English here, so it's double L. So dialer can be a voice over IP, it can be Skype, anything na pwedeng gamitin to call potential clients. It can be your own phone na merong app down to call, uh, to call potential customers. And it will be provided by your client, of course. And um, yung, yung subscription on. And then headset, um, earphones, um, if you can use a um, ano ba yun yung mayroong voice cance uh, noise cancelling feature in a headset, that would be better. But if you or already have a um, like a quiet environment or home office, um, that will do. And then, um, of course, you need to know the product or the service that you're going to offer to the um, potential customers. 
um, or a script that is provided by your client. My question sa part na to. So every time I ask ko ng question, kung may question, um, I will just count one to five, and then pag walang question, I will proceed. Okay, wala. All right. My, um, sorry, if may question po si Alma. Same yes, lang Alma. po ba? Same lang po ba may calls yung lead generation and appointment setter? Ah, uh, no. Yung, yung lead generation na, na, na itinuro ko nung last, it's purely non-voice. Yun. Now, it depends on your strategy. There are lead generation na pwedeng tumawag. Um, just to verify kung nandun pa yung tao na gusto niyong i-add sa, dun sa database na yon that, that you're working on. Yun lang. So it's not hard call. It's just for verification purposes. Yun. But mostly, ang lead generation or research is just, is, is non-voice. So, is that okay? Wala na questions? Okay. All right. So let's proceed. Okay, so software programs. Yan yung uh, mga appointment setting scheduling software na ginagamit ng isang um, appointment setter. So, um, shared calendar, it can be from Gmail or Google. And then uh, Outlook calendar, and then or other calendar apps na pwedeng gamit, ginagamit ng clients nyo. But for example, you are going to reach out to a client na wala siyang idea how this would work um this one is a good very good proposal that you will be the one to teach him on how to use google um calendars on how to share calendars using google or outlook and then um calendly i'm not sure if you've heard of it but calendly is a an appointment scheduling app that um that you can also use. Let's say, for example, the client wouldn't like to share his calendar with you. Um, you can use Calendly or other appointment scheduling apps para makita niyo yung availability ng client niyo to you know to speak to uh, to the potential customers para makapagbook kayo ng appointments at saka hindi mag overlap yung mga appointments. So with Calendly, you can, um, I will show you later on Calendly, um, you, will, you will be able to book 15 minute schedule, uh, appoint for phone calls or 30 minutes, yon. So we can access that for free mamaya. So yung free version lang yung gagamitin natin. But you can uh, explore it later on after the training. And then, um, yeah, so softwares or apps that are industry specific. So let's say, for example, doctors yung gusto nyo or medical clinic yung gusto nyo um, client, yung target client nyo. Um, sometimes they already have an app that they use para mag-schedule or mag-set na appointments doon. So um, you can explore that. You can Google or um, try free versions of of uh, medical appointment um, scheduling apps para kung gusto niyo i-target yung mga uh, healthcare professionals as clients. And then, all right, so who will be your potential clients um, kung gusto niyo maging appointment setter? So you can reach out to business consultants, you can reach out to sales executives or managers, Paano niyo sila makikita? Just go to LinkedIn or just Google. And then if their current role is a business consultant or sales executive or managers, you can reach out to them and offer this type of service to them. Ito lang ha, you don't offer virtual assistant. You offer being a remote or home-based appointment setter for them. So doctors or other healthcare professionals na may sariling business or clinics. Yun, hindi yung doctors na, na nasa hospital, okay? Kasi meron na silang sariling um, scheduler doon or appointment setters. Um, mostly automated yon. But for doctors or other, uh, or other healthcare professionals with um, 
with their own clinics or businesses, pwede nyo silang um, i-reach out. And then, um, business, businesses that offer home-related services. Uh, ano ba yung mga home-related services? They are uh, mga plumbers, um, electricians, and um, ano pa ba? Uh, roofers, yung mga gutter cleaners. So, yun yung mga... Kasi dito sa Australia and sa America na rin, merong mga tinatawag na sole traders na, na small businesses. And then they're too busy because they're always outside doing their, their service. Uh, they, need, they need an appointment setter to arrange their schedules and um, entertain clients. Kunyari, meron silang Facebook page and may nag-inquire doon and nasa labas sila. So you will be the one monitoring that and then calling those customers and then set up an appointment for them. So yun. And uh, franchisors. So franchisors, I'm not sure if you've heard of them. Dito sa Australia, may mga businesses that are open to um, third party na na gustong kunin yung, gamitin yung license nila to, to operate a business. So, yung mga franchisors, pwede mo rin i-google yan kung sino yung mga franchisors online and then you can reach out to them and um, offer your appointment setting service. Yun. My question sa Spike na to? Uh, Ms. Maya, this is Reda. Hi, Reda. Yes. Uh, hi. Um, I just want to add lang po, um, dun sa potential clients, pwede rin mm -hmm. po yung mga property owner, especially po pag yung appointment setter is calling the, uh, pag ang campaign po is real estate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. No, Most of the posts, job posts that you see online are for real estate. Meron na silang sariling, um, meron na silang sariling system, right? That they use and then yeah. scripts. Correct? Yes po, meron po mm -hmm. kaming dialer na ginagamit. Yeah, oo. So yun yung sinasabi ko na yan talaga is a job that you focus, you sit down and then you call and then andyan na ready na lahat. This one is um, more about uh, uh, offering this as a service talaga sa potential clients nyo. Then you can also reach out to an agent. Yung agent lang talaga siya, hindi siya customer. Real estate agent lang talaga siya na... Um, you can you can uh, work one on one or um, closely with them para para to set to set an appointments for them. Yes. Po. So you can um, don ba sa Reda, don ba sa real estate? Do you work with multiple agents or only one agent? Um, investor po, real estate investor. Mm -hmm. And then real estate investor, um, you set appointments for the investor for or Apo. for the agent. For the investor, po. Okay, so they can be they can be classified on the managers' na side. So, pwede rin naman real estate. If you have an idea of real estate and you want to get more clients, you can also reach out to them and offer this service. Don't wait for job post. Kung nahihirapan kayo mag-apply kasi nga masyado na, nag masyado na marami nag apply for that job post, look for real estate investors or real estate um agents or executives online that you can reach out to and offer this service. So you're not just focused on one client, pwede kayo magdagdag na magdagdag ng clients. And do this as a business. Um, be business-minded uh, when it comes to this kasi kung marami ng clients na, um, na interested sa service nyo, you can, you know, you can invite your, your sister or your cousin or your close friend to work with you. Yon, um, as a as an uh, as an appointment setter then, so you just make an arrangement on how you're gonna to, uh, going to split the fees that you're going to charge to the client. So I am giving you a tip on how or strategy on how to do this as a business and not just be being um, a regular appointment setter na parang na call, nasa call center lang kayo as, as parang an employee lang. So do this, provide this as a service. So yun. So may question pa? On this part? Okay. 
All right, so let's proceed muna sa workshop. And before the workshop is, um, I'm the one doing something and um, naghihintay lang ako na may gagawa sa inyo din. And some, some are joining, but I wanna, I wanna try a different one. Um, I want a volunteer, kung sino makakapag-share ng screen and I will guide you on how, on how this works. Ang isa-share nyo lang sa akin is um, a Google Calendar. Meron mag gusto mag-volunteer. <laughs> sa Roman na lang, na Chai. <laughs> <laughs> Sabi mo ko sana si Roman. <laughs> May nahihiya. Huwag <laughs> na si Roman Maybe kasi si Roman try. busy. Oh, ayun, yes, so what's your name? Jinky what's your name? Po. Jinky. Okay, Jinky. All right. Um, I'll stop sharing um, this one. Ay, tsaka, Jinky, wait lang ha. Uh, open mo lang yung Gmail mo and then go to your calendar first and then okay. I'll just discuss something. Okay. All right. So, so for example, you already um, proposed uh, your services to a client being an appointment setter, remote appointment setter to them. Um, usually, they would start with the leads, okay? So you, the leads would look like this. And those who have joined our internship program and you know our um, online trainings before, you would be familiar with this. Um, so we did collection of first name, last name, company, and then marrying email address and also phone numbers. So um, now it depends on the client, sometimes he has ready leads and meron namang iba na yung ikaw yung magre-research being the lead generation specialist pero it all starts with the leads so kailangan may leads before you um, start doing your task so it would look like this in a spreadsheet kung small business lang siya so it can be an, in an excel sheet or in a google spreadsheet na nakashare sa inyong dalawa na client nyo and it can also look, the leads can also look like this, uh, na nasa CRM. So this is a sample of an interface of a CRM. So in the CRM, you will find there um, the names of the contacts and then there are contact details. So important, John, if you're going to call the call, uh, phone numbers. So nakikita niyo may phone number diyan and then meron diyan Jeff Boating so siguro yung potential customer. And it can also be in a list like this which is also inside a CRM. So a CRM looks like this and um merong company details and then merong email address, meron ding phone number. Um I think may kulang lang dito sa sa presentation ko, which is a contact person. Pero, for example, your client just would like you to call that company and get the details of, of uh, the person that uh, they have spoken to. So, tatawagan niya lang lahat ng list na phone numbers and then um, you will update the database on, on how your conversation went with that potential customer. So, that's it. And then if you would like to know more about CRMs, you can always visit or watch the, the YouTube video um, about lead generation. Because we discussed there a sample of a CRM, how to use a CRM, and how to update details there. And um, yes, so Jinky, are you ready? Yes, Paul. All right. Okay, so Jinky, um, I will just stop sharing my screen and then you can now. Hindi ko makita yung cursor ko. Okay. All right. So this one is mamaya na natin i-discuss to. Pagdating sa ano. Hindi ko kasi makita yung cursor ko. I'm sorry. Ayan. 
All right, so um, what we're going to do is, um, Jinky Nasanka, can you talk so I can see? Okay, and then I can um, make you the host. And okay, can you share your screen? Meron sa ilalim na share screen button. All right. Then click lang. Okay, po. click lang po yung screen na. Mm -hmm. share okay. Yes. So so that's uh, the interface of a Google Calendar. No. Now for this is one is very basic. Now for example, your client um, is bago pa lang sa ganitong setup. Um, it's best na guide nyo siya which is, you know, part of your service on how you can share calendars with each other para makapag-book kayo na appointments for him. So just continue, um, Jinky. Click mo lang continue. Okay. So, Jinky, um, Chai, ready mo lang yung, ano, please, yung calendar, ay, yung Gmail natin, ng workshop, so you can grant access. And then, so, um, so Jinky, um, punta ka sa other calendars on the left side. So for example, si client, oh, so how can you, you know, how can you book appointments for me now? So ikaw, um, Jinky, you go to the left, uh, to the bottom part of your calendar, click on other calendars. Okay. And plus, new plus sign. And then subscribe to a uh, calendar. Because before you access someone else's calendar, we have to ask permission. So, um, Chai, uh, can you put workshop at gmail.com? Again, po, ma'am. At, at gmail. Okay, and then enter mo lang. And then um, it's okay. You can leave it blank. You can oh, just request access. Yes. Oh, because if aware, naman, kung aware naman si um, client na you will be accessing his calendar, so he will definitely grant you access. So Chai, did you um, grant his access na her access na? Um, no email yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. So once you've subscribed na sa calendar ng inyong client, then um, he will be receiving an email uh, from you na nagre-request ka ng access sa calendar niya. Yeah, you, we can go back to the calendar na. Okay. So refresh mo lang yung calendar mo, Jinky. Uh, go back na po ako dun sa... Oh, yes. Oo. Uh Oo, -oh. uh -oh, go back ka lang. And then continue mula, you know, refresh mula. And then so wala pa hindi pa nang show. Um, can you scroll down? Kung makikita mo sa other calendars yung other than holidays. Okay, refresh mo lang kasi baka hindi pa. Kasi you should be able to see C Force Workshop na there. Um, dun sa search for people, siguro it will take time pa. So dun sa search for people, um, kindly type C Force Workshop at gmail.com. And then enter. Calendar cannot be shown. Bakit kaya?
Chai, can you check the calendar? Kung may ibang settings doon that they that she needs to do, that you need to do so she can view. Wala naman na. Oh nga, usually meron dapat lalabas na na agad na calendar. Mm -hmm. Oh, refresh mo lang ulit, please. When I accepted um, her invite, lumabas din sa akin yung calendar niya mismo. Calendar niya? Mm -mm. Ay, yung, cal yung calendar na nag-link. Ah, okay. I don't know why it's not showing with her. Anyway, baka mamaya pa. Kasi last night, I was trying that. And then, medyo matagal nga siyang lumabas. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's okay, Jinky. Thank you for that. I will just share my calendar na na may nakashare na. Okay. All right, so. And then just let me know, Mama, yako okay. Just keep refreshing it. All right, thanks. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Okay, I will share my screen again, and then that's it. Okay, with this one, um, if you can you see my calendar? Yes. Po. All right. Okay, so this one, nakapag request na ako ng access doon sa um, sa Macy Davis, which is my other email address. So, for example, si C Force, siya yung um, Show you appointment setter, and uh, this is my calendar. Yeah, so if I just want to view my calendar, it in calendar ko. But for example, I wanted to view the client's calendar. Kung na kung yari si Macy Davis, I can see here. I can see the client na naka violet, naka purple siya. So for then na kung yari if I'm working and I just want to see the client's um, calendar, I can. Um, exit here. Okay, I can un uncheck the C4s and then I can view only the uh, client's um, schedules. So anywhere here, for example, ito lang mga samples lang to. So for example, so 1.30, I cannot book an appointment for him anymore. So I can do other, um, I can do appointments for, uh, for the other days that he's available. Yun. So by using this one, so kunyari, um, may nakatwag schedule ng new client. So call with um, James Smith. Yon. Um, what's gonna happen is you just save it, and then masa save na yon sa calendar ng client niyo. So that's how you just book appointments for him um, through calendar sharing. I wanted to go back again to the steps on how to share calendars uh, on Google. So basically what's going to happen is, for example, I would like to have access to my client's calendar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the left side of my Google calendar, click on the other calendars, the plus sign beside it and select subscribe to calendar. This is the client's email account, Gmail account or Google account. And then I'll just send a short note. Please grant me access to your calendar and then request access. Now the client will now receive an email from you requesting for the access to his or her calendar. So as you can see, the note that you wrote here earlier, please grant me access to your calendar is here. And um, he should now click on the link to accept that request.
Now, after the client clicks on that link to give you access to his calendar, he will see this window where he has the option to select which type of access he wants to give you. And in this case, I'll just choose um, see all event details and click on the send button. Now, he can see where or to whom he has shared his calendar and this um, part of his Google Calendar settings. And you, as the appointment setter, will receive again another calendar um, confirming that the client has already uh, granted you access to his or her calendar. And you will then have to click this add this calendar link on your email and you will have to click on the add button and now you can now view the calendar of your client So you will see on the left side of your Google Calendar that the client's calendar is already in here. And that's it. And then um, with Calendly, um, merong gusto mag-volunteer kanina. Sino siya? Na gumamit ng Calendly. So, you will have an experience on how to uh, use this. Um, all right, so get Jinky, Olet. All right, so Jinky, can you share your announcement? All right, so just go to calendly.com. Okay, so guys, this is just a sample, no? So you can use Calendly, you can use other scheduling appointments, but this one is the like one of the most, uh, one of the popular na, na ginagamit for um, setting appointments. So um, if you want to sign up, just enter your email. Uh, you, you use the free version para explore new uh, yung ibang features ng Calendly, no? Okay, so I'll and then, allow na lang po. Yeah, oh, you will click allow kasi um, si client ang dapat mag-access niya ng mag-register niya. So you will guide the client. But, you know, for you to be able to guide the client, you must also know how to register yon mm -hmm. yung um, sa Calendly or any scheduling app na gagamitin ninyo. For this one po, continue lang po. Oh, continue mo lang. Just continue. Yeah. So, doon lang tayo sa mga default settings. So, dyan, so si client ang magsaset niya kung ano lang ba yung available hours niya na pwede siyang mag take ng appointment. So, pwede 10 o'clock, mag-start siya ng 10 o'clock. You can change, he can change that and also up to 3 o'clock lang. So, it's up to you kung pwede nyo i-guide si client na um, to set that up. So, you would know kung ano lang yung pwedeng times na pwede siyang i-book. So, kung it's yeah, yeah. like working days po ito ni client. Oo, oh, oh, yes. And then, uh, for example, uh, let's just say uh, sales and marketing tayo. Mm -mm. And you can also use this, no? Kunyari, meron kayong gusto niya ng mag-market ng services niya. You can also use this. Kasi free naman, may free version naman siya. Ayan. So this one is connected dun sa Google Calendar nyo. Kung si client naka-link na sa inyo at naka, um, meron na siyang Calendly and um, hindi, hindi nyo pwedeng i-view lang yung kanyang... Um, hindi nyo pwede i-view yung calendar niya. Calendly lang yung pwede nyo gamitin. So, um, uh, you can click on the 15-minute meeting 
or 30 minute meeting kung alin man dyan, kung ilang oras ang gusto ni client na mag uh, a lot ng um, ng appointment either of the three um just yeah click mo lang din mismong box this one po uh oh click mo lang siya okay. and then Hi, um ito pang gray window pwede ko po siya i yes uh oh yes please Um, okay lang siya. Then continue mo lang. Meron ba siyang continue? Okay. Um, let's just go to that site muna. Let's just stay on that site. So, um, for this page, I think lahat naman ng 50, either 15 minute ko, uh, whether 15 minute man siya or 30 minutes or 60 minutes, um, may mga options dyan na pwedeng uh, gawin for ng gawin ng client nyo. Pwede mag-send ng notification, merong cancellation policy, pwede i-edit yan ng client nyo. And then yung confirmation page, meron dyang option to, if you click on confirmation page, Jinky, please. Yun. So, pwedeng maglagay ng confirmation page dyan um, na para isi-send doon sa customer. Yun. So, pwede mag-custom link, pwede uh, mag-display ng confirmation page. So, cancel mo lang siya. Um, so, sorry, Ms. Naya. Um, sorry. Um, hi, Ms. Naya. Medyo nalito lang po ako. Ano ang pinagkaiba ng Google Calendar sa Calendly din? Kasi si Google Calendar, di ba po, ma-access din natin yung yes. calendar ni client. Yes. Kasi si Calendly, ang sabi is, if ayaw ni client na makita mm -hmm. mo yung calendar nyo. Yes. So parang ano po yung magiging ano ni Calendly? Uh, um, okay. So si Calendly, ang ipapakita lang niya is yung available schedule ni uh, ni client. Wala kayo makikita kahit anong event. So hindi nyo makikita yung, uh, hindi nyo may share niyo, hindi nyo makikita kung ano yung nasa calendar niya. Makikita nyo lang, kunyari, 9 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 3 o'clock, yung mga available times lang niya. Ah, okay. So that's the only time that oh you na ikik click nyo. So go back muna, Jinky, to that page. Kailangan may makita kang kalen parang option na jan eh, to book appointments. Yon um. And then click on calendly.com. Yung link under your yan. So yan lang ibibigay sa inyo ni client na link. So, kunyari, um, mayroong client na mag-book ng 30-minute meeting. So, click on 30-minute meeting. And then, so, since si Jinky, masyadong maraming available schedule. So, lahat available. <laughs> so, if you click on, <laughs> if you, and nakalimutan ko sabihin kanina na maglagay na kunyari ng isang appointment. But that's fine. So, if you click on, let's say, click on 17. So, lahat yan makikita. Pero kunyari, sa calendar ni Jinky, yung 9.30 niya at saka 10 o'clock niya is book na, hindi niya makikita yung box na yan, ng oras na yan. Okay, so that's the difference between calendar sharing and using Calendly. So, may question ba sa part na yan? Yon. So, baka hindi nyo alam, no? pwede nyo i-offer yan as a service sa client nyo. And then, if you master Calendly, you can, you know, um, suggest to use that kasi na-master nyo yan. And then, you can, you may impress naman si client sa inyo kasi, ay, wow, parang uh, she's guiding me in all of these processes. So, alam niya talaga yung, she knows what she's doing. Yon. So if you are currently an appointment setter, gusto niyo mag-add pa ng ibang um, clients na sa ibang industry naman, you can use this. You can provide this uh, as a service. You can offer this as a service. Yun. All right. So um, finish na ako with regards to the basics of appointment setting. Now, um, I would like to introduce to you um, my second presenter. Um, he is a current appointment setter. So he will teach you the strategies kapag si client naman ay um, merong um, 
merong tight deadlines, merong talagang specific na clients na gustong i-reach out to, pero hindi kayo makapasok or maka hindi nyo, parang nahirapan kayong kunin yung mismong target person ni client. So, si, si Roman, he will teach you on um, how to, um, uh, on different strategies on how to reach out to um, key contact persons. Um, Jinky, thank you so much for sharing your screen. And then if you have questions, we can do that after uh, uh, the presentation of Roman. Thank you, Jinky. Welcome po. Roman, are you here? Yes, just a moment. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. So while Roman is preparing his presentation, um, dun nga para sa Calendly no or other scheduling apps. Um, if you opt to uh, for your customer, for the client's customer to receive confirmation via text, ito yung mali receive. So dito sa Australia, and I'm not sure yung sa Philippines kung meron ng ganyan. Dito sa Australia, um, whenever I set an appointment or book an appointment with a doctor or um, or um, a consultant or coach. I receive confirmation. So like this, Hi May, this is a friendly reminder of your appointment. Yon. So nakaka-receive na appointment. So they won't miss that appointment with your client. So katulad nito, dental appointment reminder. So yun yung mga SMS or text messages na nare-receive ko. So and then this one naman, yung last is yung 10x income uh, web class. Um, ito yung uh, isa sa mga webinars na ina-attendan ko. So, I received that um, confirmation as well. So, um, that's it. So, that's one of the features you know, uh, ng uh, appointment um, scheduling app. So, Roman, um, take over. I will give you... Uh, you can all also share your screen. Well, I have nothing to share. <laughs> Just, anyway, uh, hello guys. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, and good evening to Maya, since uh, we are uh, we are two hours behind, right, Maya? Yes. Two hours, two hours behind from uh, Australia. But anyway, so uh, welcome, guys. Um, I know that you are um, you won't be here if you are not in interested in aspiring um, app appointment setters or lead generator um, generation specialists in the future. So, um, I was uh, asked by uh, Maya to you know just give some of my or share some of my experiences and insights on uh, how I did things uh, uh, while doing my job. I'm, a, I'm an appointment setter. And uh, just to give you a short history about how I started, um, well, just a moment. Well, just, uh, I've been, uh, I've been uh, working for the past uh, 24 years now. Okay, I'm very old. And I've been... <laughs> And then I've been involved in different industries. Uh, I worked as a subject teacher, a service crew, been in sales. I knocked on doors. Um, I traded foreign currencies and uh, did all kinds of odd jobs that were available during those times in, you know, in the early days. Parang tagal na, no? But yeah, sobrang tagal. And you know, I even opened up a sari-sari store. Unfortunately, it didn't do very well. It was not enough to pay the bills, so I decided to just close it down. And I thought to myself, why not just do the thing I'm good at, uh, but just do it here at home? So that's what, that was the time I started applying as a virtual assistant. So, um, well, um, I started as an appointment center back in uh, 2017. But prior to that, in 2006, uh, I started my career as a call center agent in one of the best uh, BPO companies in Makati. So who are call center agents here are there are there call Me center call. agents Me. okay Arami -arami then. and others are just regular guys uh, who had previous jobs but because of the COVID-19 situation uh, we, um, you know napilitan tayong mag work from home which is not a bad idea actually it's a very profitable uh, industry you just know you just need to know how to do it, where to go, and where to find help. So you're in the right place right now. So, um, and, uh, but um, one of the reasons why, well, I actually stayed in the, in the BPO uh, industry for nine years. 
And one of the reasons I left the company is that the traffic situation in the metro area was not getting any better. So it really affected my health, my performance at work due to lack of sleep. I live in Desmarinas, Cavite, and you know you can imagine how far my home was from where I work. So and because of that, I finally called it quits and just decided to stay at home and work here. So in 2017, I met Maya. I met you, um, friend, <laughs> online through a common friend, and she landed me on a job as an appointment setter with one of her clients in Singapore. Prior to that, I've been working as uh, you know appointment setter, so called. Because it wasn't uh, really, you know, medyo vague yung description ng mga trabaho ko noon. I told you I did odd jobs online as well. Mm-hmm. I did online teaching, okay? Uh, I, um, I was able to teach Japanese students prior to that. Uh, online ren. And uh, it was not, it was a good, it was a very um, fulfilling career. But it was not paying very well. Maliit lang kasi ang bayad sa mga... I don't want to mention any more uh, some companies, but yeah, it's not that good. It's not that good when it comes to pay. So I really need to find something uh, that could actually, you know, compensate you mga bills sa bahay. So this might give you an idea. And uh, uh, what I'm sharing to you right now, you could actually do the same thing. So um, going back, um, the the person I'm working with right now. Uh, the the the, um, the the client that the Maya actually uh, referred to me is the CEO of a brand certification and advertising company in Singapore. So uh, when I started in 2017, my initial task was to update the company's CRM and make sure that all significant contact information are updated and organized. So the the last time my client ever hired someone to do that was uh, about five to six years ago during that time. So you can imagine how outdated this database was. So chances are the mo- most of the people in the list are no longer working for those companies. So I really had to start from scratch and I had to do a bit of uh, lead generation during the first few weeks. At first, it was very tough and challenging. I was a newbie like uh, some of you right now and was not quite sure where and how to start. Fortunately for me, Maya and her team of seasoned uh, virtual assistants um, came to my aid and helped me during those early stages. So it was after that that uh, when I realized that um, appointment setting was not as difficult or as complicated as I thought it was. Right now, medyo maring vague kasi yung, 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 ibang, yung ibang terminology sa inyo, yung steps and everything. But once you get a hang um, of it, it's very easy. Um, yeah. Yeah, Roman, is it okay? Um may baka meron lang sa inyo na mag mag-ask. Gusto mag-ask about what your uh, understanding is about the whole uh, appointment setting. Hello. Oh, gusto kasi malaman kung ano yung ano, kung ano yung iniisip nila when, when they see an appointment setting na na job post. Si Michelle, gusto mo magtanong? Par- parang wala sila. Naririnig ba nila ako? Yes po. Oo. Alright, so... Naririnig po, Miss Naya. Okay. Um, gusto ko lang malaman, bakit kayo nag-join? Ano yung understanding nyo ng appointment setting? Kapag nakikita kayo na, oh, appointment setter, we're hiring, ganon. So, ano yung iniisip nyo agad? Um, ako po, for me po, um... Hello po. Yes. So for me po kasi once para kung pag nakakita ko po ako ng ganung job um, post ang umaano po sa mind ko is sales. So okay. medyo <laughs> parang na-off po ako pa kasi nag-BPO po ako before pero on customer and customer service and naano ko po na po kung mga hindi ko siya forte doon sa sales. So Parang sales, <laughs> appointment setting, parang it's equivalent to sales. Yun po yung aking um, understanding of appointment setting. Okay. So, hardcore sales. Kasi appointment setting, may sales naman talaga siya. Part of sales siya. Pero merong appointment setting na hindi naman hardcore. And you can offer that service sa client. Kasi importante dyan talaga strong din yung customer service nyo. Kung paano nyo makukuha yung... Uh, yung potential customer na gusto ni client yon all right thanks thanks jinky okay roman proceed okay thank you 
All right, so, so, so uh, tama nga ba Roman na it involves talaga hardcore selling? Well, uh, like you said, not every appointment setting tasks involves uh, sales or direct selling. Okay, there are there are presentations. Uh, that's very sure. But mm -hmm. um, I used to work for a real estate uh, uh, company before, where we actually uh, set appointments for our uh, managers. But we don't really close the deal. They are the ones who close the deal. We just set appointments for them. So that means mm -hmm. we are in charge of their calendar. But that's it. That's as far as we could go. But we mm -hmm. don't really sell anything. Uh, we don't. Uh, we own. What we do is we only present our services, and that's it. Yes. So um, I guess that's one of the reasons, Maya, why uh, and you guys are a little bit, um, you know, hesitant or afraid, if you will mm -hmm. use that term in applying for these sort sorts of uh, you know jobs available online because marami ang ayo sa sales and it's really yeah. hell being in sales yeah. Yeah, i've been in sales before and uh it's a very difficult you know mahirap talaga um especially doon pa lang sa unang you know unang pasok pa lang ng presentation mo it's really gonna take a lot of guts for mm -hmm. you to really uh, you, because you're not just selling a product you're selling yourself and uh, you're selling the whole company and you're presenting the whole business mm -hmm. and and i don't understand where you're coming from but anyway um later on i will explain why um well nandun na rin naman tayo no just to uh, because uh, earlier the, someone uh, i saw that that question uh, are there calls between um uh, appointment setting and you know lead generation tama ba yung question the question was, same lang po ba yes. may calls, your lead generation and appointment mm -hmm. center? And I think this was already answered, but just to expound on that, mm -hmm. there are uh, appointment setting that, you know, mga non-voice account naman siya. Okay? And um, just to explain a bit, and, and uh, you know, in a, in a few sentences, um, if you, um, if you, you saw yung explanation kanina sa slide ni Maya, no? Just to explain uh, the difference between that and lead generation, it is the part where you do research and gather information about a prospect's contact info, like phone numbers, emails, addresses, designations or positions in the company, social media accounts, blog posts, etc. On the other hand, appointment setting naman is, katulad yan sinabi ni Maya, is that part where you secure meetings with these contacts mm -hmm. okay, who hold positions in the company. So, uh, which is our, which are significant to the market that you are assigned or tasked to look for and reach out to. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the difference. All right. So, uh, any questions? Okay. So, rebuttals. Well, first of all, once you apply for a company, usually this is uh, actually um, ano to eh? um, It is a given that once you apply for that company and you are able to speak with your bosses or your managers or wh whoever hired you. Um, they are going to provide you with a set of scripts that you're going to actually study and in, in most cases, memorize some of them. And uh, when it comes to rebuttals, pino provide darin nila yung mga rebuttal scripts na kinakailangan mong sabihin kasi yung iba, ibang mga managers or ibang mga company owners, meron silang standard uh, responses when, when they are doing rebuttals. You can just, you know, rebut. You could actually do that. Why not? But Sometimes they have to follow some rules and they have their own company code of ethics that uh, you, know, you, you need also to follow so that you may avoid words or terminologies that are a little bit off uh, pagdating sa kanila. So when it comes to rebuttals, these are actually provided scripts na rin by your bosses. If not, there are, you know, you may, you may uh, have a session with your managers and um, ask them what should be done when or what should be res responded or how should it how should this question be responded uh, when the uh, when the occasion arises for example you got a uh, a very irate seller or i mean a, a very irate, irate customer and how do you how do you respond to that how do you address the issue now um so meron sila mga ready scripts uh, now by the way guys i'm talking based on experience huh? so there could be other ways in order to rebut you know, uh, those types of yung mga, uh, yung mga not interested or whatever means and minumura kayo, di ba? Uh, that happens. Um, also, uh, I would suggest that let's say, although you have those 
set of rebuttal scripts in your hand or right in front of your screen whenever you're making calls or setting appointments, it's best to take note also of any, uh, any rebuttals that you will encounter that are not part of the script. List them down on a notepad or on, on anything that you can write on and then submit them later and uh, you know, park those questions to your managers later on so that they could address them specifically. So that next time those same rebuttals arise, you'll be able to address them with no, uh, no, no, uh, na hindi kay uh, with no trouble. All right. Uh, may question pa. Uh, okay, baka pwede ko nasagutin to. Ang dialer po ba provided din ng client? Um, so if you are providing this as a service to your client, um, yung dialer, you can suggest to the client na pwedeng gumamit ng Skype, but he will have to pay for the subscription. Um, depending on which country they would like the potential, you would like to call the potential customers. And meron din naman clients na meron na silang set up na voice over IP, which you can just install quickly on your computer. Like, for example, uh, meron na silang voice over IP, you will just have to download a, um, a dialer, which is, for example, ang dialer is x -Lite. You can Google that. And then, pwede nyo na isama yan sa package na that you can use x -Lite, and then you'll just ask for the account settings uh, clients ninyo, which is paid by the client. So on dialer, it can be downloaded. Um, ang hihingi niyo sa client is yung subscription or yung account settings ng voice over IP. So, yun. Uh, just to be clear. So, isasama niyo yun sa proposal niyo if you want to provide this or if you want to offer this as a service. Kasi, ma, pag nagsabi lang kayo kay, kay client na uh, you want to become an appointment setter, pero hindi niya alam how this works, kailangan may nakasama na doon na um, communication tools and then you list down pwedeng yung mga options na pwede niyang gawin, gamitin o ibigay sa inyo, which is subscription ng Skype and also um, account settings ng voice over IP. Yun. Or Skype ba ba? Meron pa bang ibang dialers? Pero meron bang ibang gumagamit ng Google something? Um, What's that from Google that you can call US numbers? Actually, Is yes, meron. Hang out. 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 So yes, you yeah. can call US numbers there. For manual dialing lang po kasi yung hang out. Miss Nair. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, but uh, uh, if I may uh, insert something. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot really use uh, yung Google. Remember, if you're going to look at your Gmail account, di ba merong maliit na icon do sa left part or left side corner ng, ng Gmail interface nyo where you can call the United States or any other countries, right? If you notice that. Yes. Um, I suggest that do not actually use this as your main dialer when you are calling clients because uh, I've done that several times in the past. And my Gmail account got suspended so many times because I did that. Because I don't know for what rules are I'm, what, what set of rules I'm breaking. But uh, uh, their, their reason is always one and the same. It goes against their, you know, their rules or company rules or whatever you call that. Mm -hmm. So you should okay. really have something, uh, a dialer. Uh, or you could request one, like Maya said, from your client. And um, ano pa ba? Meron na namang iba na meron na silang CRM and inside that CRM may dialer na doon. But sometimes because of, you know, um, some technical issues, it doesn't work. That's why um, most clients, they prefer na separate ang dialer nila doon sa CRM. Because the CRM kasi you are already um, um, typing, you know, you're doing data entry work there and it's also web-based. So, minsan nagka-crash siya. So, yung ibang clients talaga, they prefer na separate yung dialer sa database or CRM. Yun. Okay. So, meron pa bang question? Um, meron yata ang question. Um, how do you go through, ano, ano strategy mo, um, Roman? For example, merong operator. How do you go through that gate? Gatekeeper ba ang tawag doon? 
or gatekeepers? Yes. <laughs> gatekeepers ang tawag doon na sila yung either telephone operators or secretaries ng mga companies. Okay. Noon. All right. Well, I always encounter gatekeepers who are really, really, uh, you know, it's like, you know, just take it as it, you know, ano yung, what it actually means. Gatekeepers. Sila yung parang mga gwardiya dun sa kumpanya, no? But uh, just to point, some, uh, point out something, this actually uh, makes, uh, you know, gives the reason why lead generation is very important. Because uh, when you say lead generation, you know, you generate ka ng mga leads and you're supposed to gather information about key contact people or yung mga decision makers. Now, if, what, if the numbers that you have on your, in your database or in your CRMs are just main trunk lines, you will surely get nowhere except gatekeepers, gatekeepers or itong mga secretaries or mga receptionists. Now, but uh, since you're already there, what I usually do is, of course, I introduce myself and what company I represent. And um, if I tell them directly that uh, I'm looking for someone, uh, you know, someone in their, in their company in, in a certain position, I will surely get um, a no for an answer like they, were, they would say, oh, he's busy. He's not in the office right now. Okay. All right. So, um, pagka ganun na nangyari, you have no choice but to either leave a message or ask them when would be the best time for you to call back so you could get back with them. In most cases, they will actually entertain you and tell you that, okay, you can call back tomorrow morning at this hour. And if that happens, then surely if you, 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 know, you, you return call the next day, you could actually give that same reason. Well, I called yesterday and uh, I was supposed to uh, look for Mr. Johnson, maybe, uh, for, for example. And uh, you told me that you can, you know, I can speak with him at this hour. Okay, so that's one way of getting through the gatekeeper. Another way is, uh, this is quite, um, this is quite, uh, medyo, hindi naman ano, kaya lang, uh, sometimes, dumidiscard ako ng konti, sasabihin ko sa kanila na, I'm looking for Mr., you know, Mr. Reyes, for example, and um, I was just following up on an email that I sent him earlier. Is he, uh, is he in the office right now? So, of course, si gatekeeper or si secretary, walang alam do sa email na yon. And if you're the secretary, uh, you wouldn't reject someone who has already given someone an email, especially your boss. And syempre, she would think that that is a personal email towards her boss. So, um, she would think twice before actually rejecting you. Oh, we're not interested or what? Because the fact that you sent them an email, although it's not true, and I, I was just, you know, I was just bluffing or making that up just to get to the person, right? So that is in a way uh, getting one step ahead of that person in order to get to the, you know, to the, to the right uh, person that I'm actually calling for. Um, and that, Actually, uh, sa akin na, naging successful ako sa ganung strategy. Kaya lang, ito ang problema. Kapag nakausap ko na talaga yung tao, syempre, I have no choice but to say the same spill. Hey, sir, um, I, I just sent you an email earlier. Did you receive it? Syempre, wala. Kasi that's, that's just a makeup story. But, you know, you could always find a way to just, you know, para makalusot ka. Oh, well, maybe um, it's uh, taking a while before you receive it. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. And then go ahead and present. And, you know, set that appointment. So that's one way. Uh, another way is um, if you can't get through the, the gatekeeper, ask for the contact info or, you know, you already asked for the best time to call and ask for, you know, any other contact info that you might still not have in your list, like an email address perhaps, or a cell phone number. Uh, the cell phone number is very, very important. If you could get a hold of the mobile number, then go ahead and do it because if you're going to keep on calling the landline, you're surely not, you know, not be able to, to talk with a person because they're always on the move. So mm -hmm. getting their mobile numbers would be a good idea because wherever, wherever they are, they may be, you may be able to call them and, you know, perhaps set an, a, a call appointment with them. And then, you know, when that time comes, you may explain or make your presentation. Yon. Okay, so sabi nga ni Ray that, uh, I think the hardest part is how to pass a gate, uh, gatekeeper, especially for B2B calling. So yan yung, um, yan yung challenges na, na mamimit nyo if you are into B2B calling. Now, 
if you are targeting small businesses and for example um, mga home service providers yung katulad ng binanggit ko kanina um, like electricians cleaners yung mga uh, home cleaners or um, um, roofers yung mga ganong trades or skills um, um, pwedeng mga residential um, um, customers yung pwede nyo makontact and you know, wala naman siguro ng gatekeeper pag residential yung inyong ano, unless na lang may batang laging sumasagot ng telepon, no? <laughs> so you have to um, uh, think of a strategy pa paano ipapasa ni, ni baby yung phone sa kanyang uh, daddy or mommy. So, um, yun, so walang mahirap nasa sa inyo yun kung sino yung gusto nyong i-target na clients. So, pwedeng corporations or big companies like yung client ni, um, ni Roman. No, nasa, so, B2B ang tawag doon. So, business to business. And um, ako rin, yung business ko is business to business. So, I'm targeting um, um, company owners no, when I, when I um, offer my services. And uh, so, yun, if you want to start to become an appointment setter, start with the small businesses. And small business owners, saan yung makikita? You can look for them on Facebook. You can look for them on Craigslist. Lahat ng mga um, small businesses na nag-offer ng mga, you know, mga services nila. And pwede rin, um, what else? Book authors or coaches, consultants. Yun, pwede, yung mag, pwede kayo mag-reach out to them and uh, yung mga events organizers na nag in, wala nang events ngayon in person so uh, yung mga nag-organize ng mga webinars so pwede rin kayong um, yun, yung mga coaches pwede kayong mag-offer ng services sa kanila and uh, walang gatekeepers doon all right so uh, Reda, mas madali pag B2C kasi direct call ka sa homeowner yes mm -hmm. so it's not just homeowner no meron ding mga um, uh, for example, ako, I am a student, I want to um, uh, enroll sa isang ano. So pwede rin, kunyari, um, isang, isang trainer na gusto maghanap ng student. So you can, you know, directly reach out to students. So walang gatekeeper doon. Yun. And then you can set appointments, for example, to attend a one-on-one -on -one, um, session or training. But then uh, set appointments for a webinar like this. Yun. So very easy. And damning ways to become an appointment setter to offer your services. Yun. Um, meron pa bang question? Ano po usually an intro when you contact a client for the first time, Roman? Ano spiel mo? Uh, okay, so usually, um, sandali. Uh, Opening spiel. My opening spiel, syempre, eh, okay lang naman na banggitin ko yung ano, no? Uh, Maya? Yes. Yung, yung company? Okay, sige. Alright. Oo, oh, kasi ang tagal mo na dun, eh. Oo. Oh, wala, <laughs> <naman kasi, laughs> oh, wala naman siguro ng kasi sa, <laughs> sa kanya yan. Okay, so usually, uh, this is just a sample, but of course, uh, you, you, all, you can always customize it and based on sa kung ano yung nire-request ng bosses or managers niyo. So, this is how I present myself. Hi, this is Roman from Superbrand Singapore. Calling on behalf of Mr. Mark Pointer, um, and then of course they will respond. Yes, uh, what do you want, and uh, what are, why are you calling? Well, um, you know, um, Acer Computer Singapore has qualified for the Super Brands program this year, and uh, the reason for my call now is to invite you for a short Zoom meeting with uh, Mr. Pointer to further discuss uh, with you possible participation of, of Acer to the Super Brands Awards program, which will be held later. Uh, this year, 2020. So, is there a, is there a best time we could uh, uh, make or do the Zoom meeting next week? Or if you have a possible uh, available uh, schedule this week, then that would be great. So just of course wait for uh, you know their response. Now, if you notice that um, I am setting up Zoom meetings dito sa spiel na to, because that's the way it is right now. It's the new normal. I used to just. Um, or set appointments where they could actually meet someplace else or somewhere, maybe in their office or okay, you know in a restaurant, diba? But right mm -hmm. now, since they couldn't, they cannot do that. Uh, everything is done online, so that's one way of uh, you know of uh, opening your spill. 
Now, um, are there real estate uh, investors or are there people here who work for real estate investment companies right si now? Reda. Reda. Okay, for example, it's a real estate company. I'm mean, hi, this is Roman from uh, XYZ uh, Investors. I'm just calling to see if you have any homes or properties for sale. We're looking to buy two more houses this week. So if you're interested, um, we have a few minutes now so I could uh, gather some basic information and uh, we'll, get back to, we'll get back to you once I get this uh, over to our acquisitions managers to see if they're interested and they'll call you back and make some offers. So that's one way of making it. It's, it's quite a mouthful, but you can always, you know, uh, summarize it based on, you know, based on their preferences or based on your, the ease of saying it. So there's, uh, there are really no rules for as long as you are able to first introduce yourself, second, introduce the prop, uh, the, I mean, the, the company that you're working for, and then third is state the reason why you're calling. Okay, and that's basically the the reason for that is you know in order to set an appointment for your, uh, for your managers or you're setting an appointment on behalf of your managers. Bernadette, um, if you could unmute, um, I just want to clarify a question about my rejections. Din po ba if you're an appointment setter, um, Bernadette? Yes, po. Yes, uh, what do you mean by um, rejection? A rejection kapag nag-offer ka ng service or rejection during, Offered. you know, the, doing the task? Offering the service and uh, during the task po. Ah, okay, so both. So, sa, ako ha, sa, si Roman ang sasagot dun sa during the task. So, ako sasagutin ko if you're offering the services. Okay, so kasi I usually offer services. So, in business, um, when you are marketing or... Um, introducing your services, you will, you know, hear a lot of no's than yes. So that's why um, um, I suggest na mag-gather kayo ng leads or ng potential clients nyo kasi the more leads or the more potential clients that you collect or that you list, uh, uh, the more potential clients you list, um, the more chances na makakuha kayo ng client. So, um, Blogging, ang importante dyan is you have reached out to that person, you have introduced your, or you have introduced your services, and then um, magsistick na yun sa mind nila if ever later on or in the future, they, they need, um, they would need a, uh, an appointment setter, babalikan nila yung email mo. Yun. Pag nag-email ka, if you're going to call naman, um, that's okay. Um, rejections are okay. Um, just let them know na um, should you be open to hire an appointment setter in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Yun. And uh, kung sa phone yun ha, and um, kapag wala kayong email address, so is it alright if I you know, request for your email address so I can send you some newsletters or updates about me from time to time? Yun. Yun yung kapag sa calls naman. Kapag naman email, just reply na, oh, thank you for your reply. Yun lang din. Sabihin mo lang din na, should you be needing, uh, should you need an appointment setter in the future, then um, please keep my contact details. You can reach out to me via email. So, yun. So, that's the way how you handle rejection. So, um, ang importante lang dyan is you introduce yourself. Tawag dito na provide me information about your services. Yun. So, um, Roman, so rejection naman during the job. Ngang, sorry, I'm not interested. Ganon ang sagot agad. Okay. Yeah, I understand where that question was coming from. That is one of the main reasons why sometimes, uh, you know, appointment setters, you know, um, like us are, you know, quite hesitant to pick up the phone and start the call. Okay. If you're having hesitations picking up the phone and calling that number because of the fear of being rejected by the person on the other line, then you're doing it wrong, you're thinking wrong, and everything about it is wrong. So when that happens, I want you to stop for a while and rethink the situation. Um, you should ask yourself, why am I calling in the first place, Diva? Right? So we are calling not because we need something from them, okay? but because we have something to offer them that would help their businesses grow and get even more revenue. Now, if you're rejected by one, just let it go. Move on. You know, just let it go. Elsa, Let it go and move on. Leave the emotions on the door. Lingering on that one single rejection would negatively affect your succeeding calls. 
So perhaps you'll get rejected again on the next call. And then again. And then again. And again. But you know, who cares? You still got hundreds more on your list. So soon enough, you'll hit the jackpot and we'll get that appointment. Correct. So yun din ang pwede nyo i-apply sa sarili nyo when you are going to offer your services to the clients. Na marami talagang rejections. And katulad ng mga online sellers, hindi naman lahat bibili sa inyo eh. Diba? So market lang ulit yung um, be seen. Kailangan makita kayo ng ano and be known ng, uh, ng mga potential clients nyo. So tuloy lang. Tuloy lang ang buhay. <laughs> yun. Um, meron pa bang questions before we end this uh, training? Okay, so Chai, wala na ba tayong questions? Okay, speak, uh, just one last word, uh, Maya. Yes. Okay, uh, speak yung mahiyaan. Remember guys, in order for you to be successful in this, uh, in this industry or in this type of job, you should always be confident, you know? Yung, yung skills matututunan yun eh. Yung, uh, yung uh, techniques, matututunan yun. Once you're you know, in the job, ituturo sa inyo yun, it could all be taught. But remember, confidence is something that your bosses or your managers will not give you. That is something that will come out of you, supposed to be coming from you. Okay? So confidence plays a big part in your appointment setting skills. You must be the one in control of the call without being pushy or annoying. Okay? The persons on the other line are trained professionals. And they know fear if they smell one. So when that happens, you'll most likely get a no for an answer without even having that chance to explain yourself or that opportunity to make a complete presentation. So you must be clear and assertive when you speak. Having good rapport comes a long way as well with getting, to the, person, getting the person's attention or perhaps getting that much-needed appointment with him. So remember, in this job, uh, patience, persistence, confidence, positive outlook will would get you over these negative experiences like you know fear of being rejected and all or all sorts of negative stuff so yeah. a positive mindset before you work would go a long way and that would mean the difference between success and failure so remember it all starts in the mind in the mind yeah so what if people fluent sa english okay ako hindi rin ako magaling sa english okay hindi ako 100% confident sa english ko but you know when i talk to people here in australia um they'd say na oh you have a nice english or perfect english or good english ganun so sa sarili ko ni pa confident but you know practice makes perfect um magbasa-basa kayo and then you just practice it. Kung gusto niyo mag-practice ng um, introduction niyo sa client, then practice it. And um, ano pa ba? Um, yun. So, uh, when you say fluent, meron kasi iba na um, hindi rin naman marunong mag-English masyado, pero understandable naman yung sinasabi nila. And that's okay. So, when you become an appointment setter, Usually, yan may binibigay talagang script yung client and then you just practice it over and over again. Now, if you want to try it yourself, talagang you have to do your research and then um, come up with an, an introduction for your services. So, i-practice nyo lang yun. And then, mag-gather kayo ng mga frequently asked questions and then, aralin nyo lang yung, yung mga sagot para dun sa frequently asked questions. Yun. Um, sa appointment setting, mga frequently asked questions then yun lang dyan is uh, how, how will you book appointments for me? Um, yun nga, pwede nyo isagot na we can share calendars or you can use this scheduling app. Yun. And you can provide me with, uh, with a soft phone or a dialer that I can use so I can book appointments for you. So yun mga yun, ang dali lang. Pwedeng, pwedeng aralin, pwedeng i-practice. Yon. So, Roman, meron ka ba bang gustong i-add? What if di po fluent sa English? Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, what was the uh, question again? Yon. What if di daw fluent sa English? Okay, so, uh, you know what? Um, um, most, most foreigners right now are much open-minded than before. And, uh, you know, you will, always, you, you will always experience, you know, talking with people who are quite uh, conscious about, you know, your accent or the way you speak or the way, your grammar, for example. 
but you know don't get intimidated some people uh, most most clients really don't really don't mind what uh, how you say it and you know how you speak i mean uh, not the how you say it but how you speak okay it's how you deliver that's the most important it doesn't matter if you if you have this accent or so or, or what okay your job is not for for you to impress your you, you impress yourself on them your job is to impress your product or services on them and as soon as long as you are able to explain it fluently okay based on the uh, descriptions and specifications that the company provided you to provide those people you're going to speak with then that's good enough okay you don't have to have you know uh, you know a wide uh, a wide knowledge of the english vocabulary so um, we're all past that those times okay although syempre kung english teacher ka syempre you have to be fluent about speaking in English. Diba? So, kanya-kanya rin industry yan. Eh. Depende yan kung ano yung pinasok mo. But since you're not an online English teacher, so that I think is not a requirement at all. And you should not be intimidated by that. You shouldn't be afraid of that. And you should not think twice about getting into this kind of job just because of the lack of, you know, the English language. For as long as you know how to do the job, you know how to explain yourself uh, clear, then that's good enough. Yeah. All right. Correct. Um... So, ako, practice lang ako ng practice, Roman. That's <laughs> the key to success. Yes. Yeah, so but you know what? If you really want, yeah. If you really want to improve your, that's not, not, that's not a problem. There are so many ways you can learn more about the English language. You can always enroll, di ba, sa mga English, yung mga IELTS, di ba? Yes. Wala naman problema doon. Read a lot of English books aloud. Do not read them silently. Read it aloud. Record yourself. Or kaya watch movies that have sub, sub, English movies that have subtitles. Mm -hmm. That way you're learning. Subconsciously you're learning. You don't know. Isang araw lang nakipag-English ka sa isang friend mo. Hindi mo alam, ginamit, ginagamit mo na yung mga idioms, yung mga, yung mga uh, figures of speech. Yes. Na narinig mo sa movie na pinalad mo. And, oh wow, gan, ano ah. Um, um, ang tawag sa ganun, um, um, very uh, fluent yung English mo. Big words, ganun, parang ganun. So there are so many ways to to learn the English language if you want to learn it, but that's not a requirement at all in this kind of business. Yes, correct. Ako nga eh, minsan hindi ko alam paano ipronounce isang word. Gino Google ko lang. Tapos meron dong di ba parang pronunciation how to pronounce? Yeah. Yon. Tapos sa 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 YouTube naman, um, meron din sila don how to pronounce. So iba ibang videos, iba ibang pronunciation. Sabi ko mami mili na nako kung paano kaya pa pronounce itong word na to. <laughs> so yon. Um, research lang and yon na. Keep reading, keep listening. Yon. And then my question dito Roman, Sir Roman. Oh sir, how does a client evaluate you as an appointment setter? Was there ever a time when you did not land a single appointment in a day? And will it affect your performance if you do not land an appointment within your work, working hours? Okay, just to answer the first line, how does a client evaluate you as an appointment setter? Of course, you, they will be, you will be evaluated based on the number of appointments that you'll be able to set in a day or in one week. Depending on your, the agreement that you had or the discussion that you had with your, with your employer, so that is the uh, yung parang doon kanya iQQA yun ang magiging gauge niya based doon sa agreement niyo at so anong pinirmahan mo the, you should uh, you should set appointments five appointments per day or at least three appointments per day or should, you should at least um, um, set 10 appointments per per week it dep it all depends on what you agreed on okay so that is how i am evaluated at least for me I just don't know what will be the way you, how you will be evaluated in your future jobs as appointment setters. But that was, would always depend on the agreement. Now, was there ever a time when you did not land a single appointment in a day? A lot. Okay? A lot of <laughs> times, actually. May, may, there were times that lubag pa buong isang linggo wala akong na-appoint. Okay? And, and, you know, things like that happen. And when, you know, sometimes when those things happen, it actually uh, sends a red flag. Uh, on me and sends a signal to my boss and but they will you know he will start calling me oh, Roman what's going on I mean um, what's uh, what's um, making it hard for you to set appointments this time so of course dapat kapag wala kang product uh, pro, hindi ka naging productive nung week na yun dapat you have something to tell them why there should you should be able to explain why bakit ano yung mga factors na contribute dun sa non 
productivity mo for that week or for that day. Bakit ito lang yung numbers of uh, appointments na set mo? So, so there should be a reason behind it. every every uh, no, you know, everything that happens. Okay. Yeah. Well, because I got a lot of rejection this time. These are these are their uh, no, these are their reasons and, and so on, okay? Next is I mean, will it affect your performance if you do not land on an appointment within your working hours? Of course. Okay, uh, that's the reason why you're there is to set an appointment. Wala ka na, hindi ka naman nandun para makapag-telebabad lang or makipag-chat lang or makipag-Facebook friend. Right? You're there to set appointments. And in some way, it will affect your, your performance. But then again, it all depends on the company, the, the, your employer, and your, the, uh, you know, the agreement between you and your employer. I've been working with my employer for the past three, three years na ba? Uh, four now. Four now. Four now. Yeah. And I'm still with him. And, you know, minsan nga, so sobrang close na namin, minsan nag inaaway ko na siya. nag na kami. <laughs> the fact na nag kami means it is a very healthy relationship already. It's a very healthy business relationship. Kasi nag yeah. na kami. Dati masyado, masyado magalang sa kanya. But this time, hindi ko naman siya binabasos. It's just that I'm able to express more of myself and able to, you know, uh, give more suggestions to him na so far, sinusunod naman niya. Okay. And it, it was, it's a very good relation, business relationship. So try to do your best to, you know, na makarating kayo doon sa point na ganun ang relasyon nyo with your employer. Okay? Because, you know, um, pag dumating yung time na yun, it's gonna mean a lot for you professionally and financially. Correct. Yeah. All right. Um, meron yata sigurong gusto magtanong, no? Paano ang pay rates? Paano kayo mag-charge sa client? If you want to offer appointment setting lang sa, sa clients nyo. Now, no one can dictate kung magkano dapat yung i-charge sa client. Nasa sa inyo yun. Okay? So it depends on you kung isa lang client ang target nyo or gusto nyo maraming clients. Okay? And then, um, just to give you an idea rin, um, merong appointment setting na hindi hourly ang rate. Merong appointment setting na per appointment kayo babayaran. But that is a big time yon, kasi you are already investing your time and effort doing um, appointment setting. Pero kapag naka-set kayo na isang appointment, either you will be offered, uh, let's say, uh, a commission of 30% ng sale na yun. So everything will be disclosed to you by the client. So sasabihin ni client, okay, for each, for each sale that I make and that client comes from you from the appointment setting na ginawa nyo, uh, say you will have 30%. So out of that $1,000, let's say $1,000 yung i-earn ni client noon, you will have 30% of that, which is, tama bang math ko, $300. Yun. <laughs> Medyo mahina sa math, pero yun. I think that's, yeah. So meron ganun. So kung gusto nyo mag-appointment setting na ganun ang setup, pwede din. Pwede din hourly rate, but you will have to... Um, commit sa client, mag-uusap kayo, it's a discussion for you to have with the client, okay, um, in in one week, I need at least five appointments. Ganon. So, in one week, pwede kayo mag-charge na um, depende din sa gusto nyo talagang hourly rate. So, gusto nyo ng hourly rate ng five dollars um, per hour, ibibase nyo yun dun sa one week na tatrabahuin ninyo. Let's say for one week you cost four hundred dollars. So four hundred dollars yung ano ng um ita charge nyo sa client yon. So yeah, so that's it. That's those are the different ways you can you know offer this kind of service and uh, different types of um, charges na or fees that you can uh, charge to the client yon. Um, daming ways, oo, maraming ways. So kayong may kunyari appointment setter na kayo and and phone based ang appointment setting niyo and gusto niyo naman gumawa ng different type of uh, appointment setting which is email and chats and SMS. Pwede din 'yon. And may counting calls, pwede din 'yon kasi parang um na burn out na kayo sa puro calls. So pwede niyo gawin naman 'yon through email or mix ng email and voice. 'Yon. I think ginagawa ni Roman is mix ngayon ng email and voice. Yun. Hindi lang puro, hindi lang yeah. puro voice. Yeah. That's correct. Mm -mm. So maganda rin kasi may, may, may mix eh. So if you weren't able to reach out to that person through phone, 
may way to connect with them through email. Ayun. And even connect with their Facebooks, by the way. Yeah, Facebook. <laughs> um, so, kunyari, gusto nyo i-target ang gardening services sa, let's say, sa Los Angeles. For example lang, maraming garden doon. Let's say, Beverly Hills. Um, pwede kayong mag-search sa Facebook ng gardening services doon sa area na yon. Let's say, um, say, Beverly Hills. no? And then, um, nakita nyo si... Um, medyo busy siya, meron siyang mga followers, and then uh, meron siyang parang um, button sa page niya na set appointments. Um, pwede kayong mag-reach out doon sa mismong Facebook page na yon na owner, and then um, offer the appointment services na pwedeng through phone and pwedeng through email. Na baka pwede kayo yung mag-manage ng uh, scheduling or appointment setting for him. Or appointments for him. Yun. So, yun yung isa sa mga strategies on how you can reach out to, to potential clients. Um, kung hindi pa kayo ready sa B2B, you can do this. You can offer it to small businesses, yan, small business owners. Yan. All right. So, for yan, as I mentioned kanina, if you would like a sample proposal on how you can offer this type of service sa clients, maybe for big businesses or small businesses, just... Um, Send your email addresses, yon. So we can send you the uh, sample proposal, and then we will send it to you maybe Monday now or Tuesday next week. Okay. Um, I hope this no will clear. Chaka mawala kay papano yung fear nyo on how to become an appointment setter. Kasi talaga yung iba I know na tatakot maging appointment setter, pero and daming ways to become an appointment set, hindi lang puro phone calls. Okay? Um, it's just like applying for a job. Talagang maraming rejections. Pero kung marami kayong pwedeng makontact pa, just go on. Go on and, and contact more potential clients. Alright, so meron pa ba? Thank you, May Ann. Thank you, Lenny. Uh, Nanyevic, thank you. So, Karen, so should we end this? Na meron ka pa ba ang last words, Roman, for our participants? Last words talaga, no? Yes, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oo, hindi pa ito yung huli. Sige, may part to tayo. <laughs> okay, well, um, just one one sentence na lang uh, para I won't be, uh, you know, taking much of their time. My last advice to you guys is to keep improving your skills. Uh, you can improve your skills by seeking the help of professionals in the field like Maya. Okay? And there are many more, actually. You could also watch YouTube videos like this one. Actually, hindi pa siya YouTube video. This is just a Zoom, uh, Zoom meet, uh, meet up. Pero this will be uh, uh, converted to a YouTube video, right, Maya? Okay? Yeah. So, yeah. So you could watch YouTube videos like this one and there are many other sources out there where they provide tips and strategies on how you could secure appointments successfully. So guys, good luck sa, uh, sa pag-venture nyo sa industry or sa field na to. And I wish you all the best. And if you need help, you can always get back with Maya and you know ask the, her questions, ask her for tips and all that. And abangan nyo yung mga susunod niyang mga videos. By the way, once this, um, um, I had a uh, talk with Maya earlier. Uh, once she posts this video sa YouTube, Include na lang niya yung aking, yes. yung link niya sa aking YouTube video channel rin. Yes. Okay, so click the link <laughs> down below. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't forget. No, no. Oh, oh. Um, I think most of you have subscribed already to my channel. No, um, Miss Maya Davis. Um, I will be posting more tips and um, um, mga jobs then uh, that are available. So, so far ngayon kasi nabifeel ko yung jobs quickly but if there are jobs na um, talagang um, kailangan pong hanapan ng um, candidates then I will be posting them on YouTube as well in a video format. Yun. Alright, so thank you. Um, May Ann, thank you then. Geraldine, thank you so much for attending. I hope to see you again on next training. And um, if you have any questions, um, just send us an email, go to the C4's workshop email. And then if you would like to request again for a sample proposal, so you can, you know, you can be an appointment setter. You know, hindi lang yung um, nag 
uh, tao dito naghintay kay ng job opening appointment setter roles um, offer your services to clients reach out to clients yon um, kayo naman ang mag open na opportunity for yourself yon all right okay so um, have a good night ano na ba dito 8:17 na in Melbourne Australia hmm. Good luck to everyone. If you struggle, just send us an email. If you have a potential client that na nag reply sa inyo and you're struggling on how to respond to that client, just send us a response and I will help you um, compose an email on how to respond to that client. Okay? All right. So I will see you on next training and Bye, guys. In Facebook group. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.